Fire fairies come, fire fairies come, and the fire fairies come. The dragon hadn't left his cave in days, for it had been raining, but his stomach started to growl. He went to the far corner of his cave and in his treasure box, among all the jewels and gold coins, he pulled out his rain boots, an old umbrella, and a bucket for his cloud berries, special berries that grow in Norway. He ventured outside and looked up at the clouds and pouring rain and grumbled, it's miserable, but at least there aren't any hunters, for dragons were afraid of hunters, for all the other dragons that he knew of, like him, had been chased into small caves up high in the mountains. There were no berries by the steep cliff of his cave, so he had to go to another valley up another high mountain and back down again, where he filled his buckets with all the cloud berries. When he was done picking them, he decided to go a new way home. He came across an old cabin and there was no smoke coming from the chimney and presumed no one was there. But as he got closer, he heard voices and he hurried by. But then he heard, wait, wait, a small child's voice. The dragon turned around and in the pathway stood a scrawny little boy with sandy color hair. In his grumpy voice, the dragon asked, what, what do you want? The dragon looked so frightening to the little boy that he forgot. Well, what? said the dragon, and a little puff of smoke came out of his nose. Suddenly the little boy remembered, fire, we need fire, that's what my family and I really need. We have no fire to light the stove, we are so cold, and mother said if we found fire, she would make pancakes. Well, said the dragon, don't you know that's what dragons do best? make large billowing fires. We only need a small one, said the boy. Come, come with me, the boy asked as he tugged on the dragon's leg. The dragon followed the boy into the cabin. His brothers and sisters didn't know whether to be surprised or scared, but the little boy reassured them, he's here to help us. The dragon walked over to the stove and very carefully blew and lit a small fire. Soon the cabin became warm and cozy with a golden rosy glow. The dragon almost didn't want to leave and go back out in the rain. His mother said, we are very poor and don't have much to offer, but if you like pancakes, you are more than welcome to stay and join us. Yes, please, the dragon said. Oh, and I have lots of cloud berries in my bucket by the door. So the dragon went to get them. These will be ever so yummy with the pancakes. The children helped wash and peel them and added some sugar too. The dragon insisted on cooking for everybody. He made pancakes as high as the ceiling, that there was certainly enough for everybody to share. When they were done eating the pancakes, the dragon shared stories from when he was younger of Vikings and sea monsters. That was almost 600 years ago. The children were fascinated. Please come back to see us again. The dragon agreed when he bid his farewell. He returned three days later, this time with his treasure chest filled with gold coins and jewels. He told the family 
These jewels are no good for me, but they will help make your life easier. The dragon would often come to visit and share his tales. And I heard that the dragon still lives high up in his cave in the mountains. Snip, snap, snout, my tail is all told out. Fire fairies burning bright, thank you for your golden light. Good night.